Every job I've ever had is gonna be automated or obsolete. And the same might be true for you. And if you don't believe me, keep watching. Job number one, textbooks. When I was 14, I worked for my friend's dad, making textbooks for law school. I'd photocopy court transcripts and stack them into piles. Then he'd manually cut the pages down to size and bind them into books. Today, those transcripts are digital, so at the press of a button, we can go from file to paperback book on the printer at our local library. But even that would be unnecessary. Students today can access nearly any material online. They don't need a physical textbook. Job number two, busboy and dishwasher. In Japan, there are already restaurants that take orders, deliver meals, bus tables, and do dishes automatically. Job number three, I used to make pizza, and it's a simple process. Toss dough, spread sauce, sprinkle cheese, put in the oven, and burn your hand trying to take it out. Plug that algorithm into a machine, and presto. We've got a vending machine that makes pizza from scratch in three minutes, all without burning human flesh. Job number four, cashier. I used to work with this ancient artifact known as a cash register. Now self-checkout kiosks are expanding way beyond the grocery store into large restaurant chains like McDonald's. Donald's. Job number five, lifeguard. Float carrying drones are now being deployed, able to travel five times faster than Michael Phelps. They'll be able to reach swimmers in distress in a fraction of the time. What? Now I know what you're thinking. Those drones aren't replacing human jobs because they're being operated by humans. But they don't have to be. Autonomous drones that can track a subject effortlessly are already being developed. Job number six, college student. I graduated with a BA in filmmaking. I was trained to shoot 16 millimeter film, technology that was obsolete by the time I graduated. Job number seven, production assistant. I was a production assistant for various shitty productions. Typically the main duty was driving, running errands and picking up food for the crew. Now self-driving cars exist. When they become more widely adopted, a food truck will deliver itself to the crew. Job number eight, videographer. I lug a big beefy camera camera around to document local events, but now anyone can easily record audio and video on their phone. If you want higher quality video, ask a friend to bring their DSLR. Job number nine, animator. I used to have to change a character's mouth shapes every single frame to get it to match the dialogue. It was a long, tedious process. New software tracks your movement and facial features through a webcam and links that to your character. High quality animation is now as simple as playing charades in front of a video camera. Job number 10, transcriber. Transcribing was my foot in the door into television post-production. Now, transcribing is built into everybody's phone and YouTube automatically transcribes every video uploaded. It's not perfect yet, but in the meantime, there are communities of people online that do an amazing job transcribing for free. Job number 11, video editing. Software already exists that can edit certain videos automatically, so long as the video type is formed formulaic, like a cliche Hollywood red carpet montage. Despite that, I feel the creative storytelling aspect of video editing isn't in immediate danger of being automated. Unfortunately, that doesn't make the job any more secure. Everybody has access to a camera, free editing software, and free distribution. Television and movies are going the way of the music industry. Digital, decentralized, and largely unprofitable. Job number 12, YouTuber. A lucky few have large enough audiences to sustain themselves with online ads revenue, but that won't last long because the entire online advertising industry is becoming obsolete thanks to a free browser extension, Adblock Plus. Job number 13, teacher. After developing an RSI injury from all the computer work, I decided to mix things up and got into teaching. Turns out the technology that I taught can do a better job teaching than humans. In trials done in Africa and the UK, the kids learned 18 months of traditional schooling in just six weeks with the app. Job number 14, journalist. As I write and report this information, I'm technically being a journalist. It doesn't pay any bills, of course, but did you know that legitimately experienced writers aren't getting paid anything either? Even by well-established for-profit publishers like The Atlantic. Many publishers are sidestepping human authors altogether with software. The Associated Press announced that it would start using automation technology, turning out more than 4,000 stories in the same amount of time that it took human reporters to write 300. LA Times and Forbes do it. It's a lot more popular than you think. I'm scared. Not like in the, you know, worried robots to take over the world kind of way, 
but in the I'd like to keep my job kind of way. What if I had listened to my parents' not so subtle suggestions? You know, Matt, you'd make a good doctor. Perhaps I'd be getting by at the moment, but Remember Watson, IBM's artificial intelligence that beat the best human Jeopardy players of all time? Well, Watson's going into the workforce now, and he's already doing a better job diagnosing cancer than some doctors. What about programming? There's a fad among parents to get their kids into programming because they think it'll lead to a secure job in the future. But even software development has the same fate as the music industry because the product, software, is digital. When a commodity is digital, like an MP3, it can be duplicated at no cost and become so abundant, it's hard to sell anymore. Eventually, it will be as difficult for a software developer to sell their work as it is for a musician. It's great that machines can do our monotonous chores and that technology is allowing us to learn and create just about anything. But as technology replaces our jobs, how are we supposed to earn a living? Oxford researchers predict that nearly half of all jobs will be automated in 20 years. When half the workforce is unemployed, what's gonna happen? Are the pitchforks gonna come out in a violent revolution? I mean, if people were still farmers and farmers still had pitchforks. But really, when drones farm all the food, will we get to eat it? Or are we gonna starve because we can't get a job so we don't have any money to buy it? 80% of the world's employment in the developed world is stuff that computers have just learned how to do. Well, it'll be fine. It'll be replaced by other jobs. For example, there'll be more jobs for data scientists. Well, not really. It doesn't take data scientists very long to build these things. So this is going to be a kind of change that the world has actually never experienced before. As technology increases our productivity and enables us to create and contribute without a job, maybe everyone should get paid enough to live without a job too. Well, I talk about that in this video. Do you agree, disagree? Let's duke it out in the comments. Computers right now can do the things that humans spend most of their time being paid to do. So now's the time to start thinking about how we're going to adjust our social structures and our economic structures to be aware of this new reality. Thanks to globalization and automation, there are not enough jobs for everybody to earn a living. So why don't we just give everybody the money they need to live? Sounds crazy, I know, but in Switzerland, they are actually proposing the idea. 